I just left the gym. Shout out to Fitness Connection. Uh, I said I got to get back in the gym because these past two weeks have been really tough. I haven't been eating as as right as I should be eating and uh, just haven't been in the gym. I just kind of been off track with us moving and, you know, the kids, everybody, like we all caught COVID and it was just a mess, right? So now I'm like, I'm got, I got to be committed to getting back in the gym. Uh, just got off work. I said, you know, I'm going to get, get it back in through the four days a week. Uh, shout out to Super Coffee. This is the caramel waffle. Shout out to Super Coffee uh, for helping me get through this workout. So if you are a coffee drinker and you need a kind of like a little pick me up, grab you some uh, Super Coffee. So uh, this is caramel waffle. I like it. It doesn't cause you to crash after you drink it for a while. It's only 80 calories, um, three grams of carbs and 10 grams of protein, right? So shout out to all the coffee drinkers. If this is something that you need for a pick me up, you get into the gym. I suggest you, you know, grab your super coffee. That's helping me get through this video right now. But people were asking me about my weight loss story. I posted some pictures of me on Twitter and people saw the before and after pictures. So I'm going to talk about what I did in the process um, to me losing these 80 pounds. But let me give you a quick story and how this happened and how this plays into relationships as well. Because think about it, when we're eating food, we we base relationships uh, when we meet people, like we like, let's go grab something to eat, right? So food plays a big part into relationships. And it played a part in my marriage, in my first marriage with my ex-wife and I, because I was on a different journey than she was. I was totally sold out to this, exercising and, and healthy eating and she was really wasn't ready to make that turn yet so that caused some contention with us because she was the cook so i'm like well i don't want to eat this i don't want to eat that that kind of thing and a lot of times you know she she acquiesced to that she helped me but it takes a lot of work to prep your meals and all these other things so it caused some a little frustration with us and then even with our kids like what are we all going to eat uh, uh, for dinner as a family are we going to eat healthy are we just going to eat out so that kind of caused some you know some some issues between us bad communication um not being on the same page uh, you know having the same vision as far as our health goes and it's no knock against her it's just that she wasn't ready for that place yet i did a video called uh, what was it called oh like how do I talk to my my girlfriend or my wife about like losing weight? Like, what does that process look like if she want to lose weight, but she's kind of like stuck in this place? Like, I don't know what to do yet. I did a video on that, so um, I'll have it in, just in the description below. Check that out. So long story short, I, I had a chipped bone in my knee and because I was 280 pounds, so I had to lose weight. I had surgery on my right knee, messed my right knee up because I was just too heavy. Had the surgery, got it done. I told myself I'm gonna to be totally committed to this health and wellness thing because I can't afford for my knees to be all messed up. At the time, I was probably only 25, 26. Like I'm too young for this. And even to this day, it, it still affects me to a degree. But after I got off the crutches, I started doing small things, started walking, started doing push-ups, just little things that I could control. And after a while, I started switching up my eating habits. I stopped eating late, all these different things, but I'm gonna give you some more of those tips and, and what I did at the end of the video as well. But it affected my marriage because it was bad communication because we weren't on the same page. And that's how it can affect your relationship. So if you are with someone that you're ready to make that change and they're not, you have to show that person some grace and you have to lead by example. Because remember, and I always tell people, change starts with me. You can't make anybody do anything. Only thing you can do is lead by example. And that's what I did. Um, for me, I started exercising. I started doing the, uh, this was during a time when the PX90, I think, was like, like Insanity and all those little DVDs and stuff were out at the time. But the workouts I was doing was uh, UFC. It was these these DVD sets called UFC Fit. And uh, it was like a 90 day challenge. And I was doing that faithfully. 
and the weight came off and I was eating right, eating healthy, drinking my water. But here's the thing. I think a lot of times people look at weight loss as like this thing I have to do. You have to make it a lifestyle. It's not something that, oh, I just want to drop 15, 20 pounds and then I'm going to get back to you know, eating bad and all the other stuff. No, if you're going to make this a lifestyle, you got to be committed to it. I was telling a friend of mine the other day about weight loss. And I said, before you put the food in your mouth, think, do I really need this? Should I be eating this? Or why am I eating this? Like asking yourself those questions is going to help you really think on a deeper level that am I addicted to food? Am I eating for comfort am i having anxiety all these different things and that i used to do that matter of fact i still do i'm thinking do i need to eat these cookies right now before i put them in my mouth and a lot of times i think we eat mindlessly rather if that's in front of our tv in front of our phone uh i i seen a study that showed that people eat more in front of the tv because they're not thinking because they pass that point in their mind where they're like i'm full but because their attention is divided, they continue to eat. So I was looking at a study on that and I was like, wow. So this is why it's important that eat at the table as a family. Everybody, you know, no phones. This is a no Wi-Fi zone, you know, and I'm trying to <laughs> work on that with my family and, and the kids. But because we have little kids, it's it's tough. But that was a practice that I, I put into play where I was like, I'm not going to sit in front of the TV while I eat. That's another little small thing that can help you that when you're eating just eat at the table no phone and you can focus on okay i'm full i don't need to get seconds and if i do get seconds why am i getting seconds see what i'm saying so it's more, it's more psychological than anything but i believe that if i lost 80 pounds and kept the weight off because this this has been over 10 years right and I, i'm still at 200 pounds but now at 45 i'm realizing that the things i used to do to get in shape I have to step my game up. I have to be a little more uh, thoughtful in my in my exercise now because I just can't drop the weight like I did before because I was younger. So now it looks a little different for me. So I said, let me kick it up a notch so I can get to where I want to be um, physically. But let me give you this real quick, some tips that helped me out because I know you waited for the end of the video. On top of exercising, now this is my tip. I think a lot of people get overwhelmed with eating right and exercising and i think that's where a lot of people go wrong start with one of the two first you don't have to do both of them at the same time and i know I, i'm not a, a a doctor sports doctor all this other stuff i'm just giving you my experience i i i did the work i dropped the 80 pounds and kept the weight off for years so i would say do one of the two first either you're going to eat right first and then you start to incorporate exercise or are you going to exercise first and then incorporate the eating healthy eat, eating healthy habits so I, I would say choose one whatever you think is easier for you so that's my first one the second one is uh, if you're going to as far as eating if you're going to eat don't eat late like eating in the bed and stuff like that and, and it's, i used to stop eating past six so if you're working a day shift job, see, I work nights, so it's a little more complicated for me. But if you're working days, if you're in the bed at nine o'clock, stop eating at six. No, no more eating. But the thing is, you can eat what you want. Just don't eat after six. And that way you let your body rest. You, get, you know, you hydrate yourself, you drink your water and you go to bed. And that's going to help you because by the time you wake up in the morning, like they call it the break fast, you know, like breakfast, like break fast, you're breaking this fast. So if you stop eating past six and then you, and you're sleeping for eight hours, you're giving your body that time to just break down the food that you're eating. So by the time you wake up the next day, you know, you're good to go. Sometimes, you know, you get up in the morning, you feel like you got a flat stomach because you haven't eaten anything for X amount of hours. Right. <laughs> so uh, I would say not eat past six. Uh, and then and get your water in. You gotta, I mean, I think we don't count the the, the, uh, the liquid calories. We don't count that, whether if that's alcohol, whether if that's uh, coffee, um, juice, sugary drinks, like cut back on your sugar intake if you can. That's gonna help you as well. 
And also make sure you get your checkups because you never know. And I know as men, a lot of times we don't like going to the doctor, but got to get your checkup. That's very important because ladies don't struggle in that area. We, we struggle in that area more than anything with men and getting your checkup. So that way you know where you're at as far as a, as a baseline. So I would say those things, just if you can stop eating before, uh, by the time six o'clock come, if you can stop eating by then, that'll work. Get, get in your water intake. And then when you wake up in the morning, the first thing you do before you drink coffee, drink a bottle of water. That's going to help you as well because that's going to fill you up. So especially if you're a, a breakfast person, like you got to eat first thing in the morning, drink a bottle of water first and that's going to fill you up. And it's going to really like set the pace for you for the day when it comes to eating. Um, and you'll be full faster when you drink a bottle of water first, the first thing you do in the morning. Make sure you take your vitamins, and if you're exercising, you can start off by walking. You don't have to go and do a, a you know, P90X coming out the gate. Just start walking, get your 10,000 steps in. Um, and those little small things are gonna help you. And throughout the course of time, you will see the weight come off. And then pretty soon, it's gonna be a lifestyle. It's not gonna be something that you just wanna do so you can, fit in that little red dress or uh you know you just want to want to look good as a man and get your you know your little muscles up until um you, you reach your goal and then you stop eating right and just stop sleeping and oh and that's another thing too make sure you get your rest uh that's very important as well so try to get those eight hours um turn off instagram turn off twitter uh, Facebook and all those things and uh, get the necessary rest that you need so your body can recover. So those are my tips. I hope those help you. Again, I'm not a doctor. Um, you know, I'm not a nutritionist and all that stuff. I'm just saying what worked for me over the course of 15 years and keeping the weight off. Um, and, and, and glory to God, I don't have to take any medications. Like I don't have high blood pressure. I don't have diabetes. All those things so I'm I'm grateful for that um, and we all fall off the wagon you know things happen I get it I ain't saying condemn yourself if you eat ice cream if you eat ice cream that's cool just make it a lifestyle to where this is what you do every day this isn't something that you're just doing temporarily so hopefully that helped you uh, and remember if you do have a partner who is struggling with their weight or you feel like you're on this journey by yourself and your significant other isn't down down with you you know just be the example and once you see once they see the weight come off then it's going to inspire them to want to do better as well so hopefully that was uh helpful to you it says sean heineman your premier pre-engagement coach that coach had is scary to remarry take care of people